Welcome again to Smarter Than That, where we explain scientific concepts in an easy and experimental way. So we all know today that our world is round, well, spherical, or, well, almost spherical, it's a little squished. Anyways, we know it's not flat, right? We know that um, even if we go far, far away into the ocean, we won't fall off the edge. But we're not the first to know that the world is round, and we didn't have to wait for satellites to tell us that. So at around 300 BC, a man named Eratosthenes found out the circumference of the Earth. How did he do that then, back then, without satellites, without anything really to look up from above and see that the fact that we see the horizon as flat is misleading? Today we know that already from satellite images and images from the Moon and Mars and Voyager all the way across the solar system and that's great but he did that with nothing of the sort. Eratosthenes was a scholar who lived in Egypt. One day he heard that on the around 20th of June, which is summer solstice, and the sun is directly above the equator, or pretty much directly above the equator, we'll discuss this in another video, in Sain, which is another town in Egypt, sticks on the ground have no shadow. Now he, he heard that, but it sounded really weird because where he lived in Alexandria, sticks on the ground in the same day at the same time did have a shadow. So he started thinking, what could possibly do this? Why, not too far away in another city, sticks don't make shadows, and in his home, own city, Sticks do make shadows. And then he was thinking, the only way this could happen is if the Earth was not flat, but round. And at some point, a stick makes a shadow, and at the other point, it doesn't. And it all has to do with the way the sun sheds light on the Earth. But he did more than that. He calculated the circumference of the Earth using these shadows. But instead of me just explaining it, theoretically and go over it and trigonometry, forget all about that. Let's start the experiment. And all you need to do this time is just have a big fruit. I bought, this is a red pomelo, which is actually pretty good for you, by the way. This will simulate the earth, even though it's not really round, but we'll work with it. You have a source of light. I'm gonna get a little light bulb for reading a book. This will simulate the sun. Two sticks to simulate this to a six. A sharpie and a ruler. And that's it. This is all you need to have for our experiment. So with no further ado, let's start. So the first thing we need to do is know the size of our nails. As you can see here, I marked my nails so that they each have the length of three centimeters. And what I'm going to do is when I stick them in the fruit, I'm going to make sure that the blackened out part here, my marking, is totally inside the fruit so that outside, the part that is producing the shadow is three centimeters long. And we're going to need that for the calculation. So we have our fruit standing by for us. Nice little fruit. And we have our light source, which will simulate the sun. And I will project light directly in this direction to really simulate what happens with the Earth. So we're going to turn the light on. There we go. Now we have simulation of the Earth and the sun. And we take our two nails right here. And as you can see, they're both marked. And I'm going to stick them in. Now, I'm going to try and have the first one with no shadow on it. So, as you can see, I have my first nail stuck inside. Now, I'm going to move just a little bit the fruit to make sure that my first nail barely has any shadow. So, this is right here. We have a very, very small shadow. It's really on top and it's only created because the nail has a little round head. So, my first nail has no shadow. This is simulating what happened in Sain. Now, let's see what happened in Alexandria. 
with my other nail as you can see it's marked and now I'm going to go directly on top of it and put that in there we go so as you can see we have one nail with no shadow and one nail with shadow and this is created because the fruit is round so now the next step is marking it up with my sharpie so we're going to mark the position of the first nail we're gonna have a little hole there so I'm not worried and we're going to draw how far this shadow is going so this is going up to here there we go so I took out the nails and now all that's left is the marking this is the location of the first nail this is the location of the second nail and this is the shadow the next step is to measure so the distance between the two holes 3.1 centimeters the length of the shadow 2.3 centimeters so what do we do with all the data we collected let's take another look at the earth and the sun as you can see from this picture we can treat the light from the sun as straight lines that produce the shadows the angle from the stick to its shadow or from the stick to the light beam is the same angle that is produced by the arc that is the distance between the two sticks if we can find out this angle we can produce the circumference of the circle or for that matter of the earth all you need to do is just remember a little bit of your high school geometry now a circle is 360 degrees if we found that our angle is 37.48 degrees then by finding its relative fraction out of the entire circle we can multiply it and get the entire circumference remember we have the distance between the two sticks so we do have the arc length and it really is that easy so we found the circumference of a red pomelo but Eratosthenes found the circumference of the entire earth so apparently my red pomelo had a much bigger circumference before I peeled it than after but the way I see it when in doubt try it out Don't think that I am against you When I laugh at crazy things